Okay, uh, hello, good morning. So, welcome sa atong online uh, lectures. So, hope you can follow our lessons. So, for today, we will tackle topics about programming and software. So, I think most of you is familiar with the word programming and software. Since na amon may subject before na about uh, programming fundamentals. So the language you use there is almost the same sa Excel BBA language. So as we go on, I uh, hope we will learn how to make uh, programs. Okay? Software. So one of the objective of this uh, lesson is for you to learn how to create a uh, well-documented program files by employing structured programming to implement logic and repetition. Okay? So, since Excel raman na itong gamiton, so I think uh, it would be easier for you to run a program. So, I have some questions for you. Are you familiar with any computer programs? If yes, list that all computer programs you know. Uh, I think your answer would be yes. Ba? Uh, like Python. Uh, to, that you mentioned before. So, same lang na sila sa BBA. Excel macros. So, first let's have some uh, introduction. So, what is computer programming? So, computer programming are merely a set of instructions that direct the computer to perform a certain task. So, kung lang siya, uh, kumbaga, nagbibigay ka ng instruction sa computer, then gagawin niya, then magbibigay siya ng result. So, ganun lang. So, parang example, uh, may alaga kang hayop or aso. When you say sit, ano gagawin ng aso? May higa. Pag nahiga siya, ibig sabihin, mali yung instruction na ginawa mo sa kanya. Kasi mali yung uh, binigay niyang result. Pero kung tama naman yung ginawa mong program or instruction sa kanya, when you say sit, is naupo siya, ginawa niya. So, yun. Ibig sabihin, walang error. Okay? So, parang ganun lang din sa ano, computer programming. Bigay ka lang ng instruction sa computer, bigay ka lang bigay, uh, gagawin lang niya. Papalo lang niya yung instruction mo. Pero make sure na yung instruction mo is walang error, syempre. So, since many individuals write programs for a broad range of applications, uh, most high-level computer languages like uh, Fortran 90 and Turbo C have rich capabilities. Although, some engineers might need to tap the full range of these capabilities and most really require the ability to perform engineering-oriented numerical calculations. So, uh, look at from this perspective, no? So, we can narrow the pro programming uh, topics in this, uh, in this statement. So, what are those programming topics? So, for number one, simple information representation. So, it should be uh, very simple lang, ah, uh, mga information to represent a constant, variables, and type declarations. Okay. Another programming topic is about advanced information representation. So, kung na simple na pa advanced. <laughs> Kuha. So, sa advanced information, and then yung mga data structure, arrays, and records. And for number three, mathematical formulas. So, which I think, uh, from this moment, you are already an expert. Since nakailang uh, math subject naman siguro mo. So, kumbaga, kini mathematical formulas is peanut na lang sa inyo. Or very CCU. Or easy. Ano yung ganyan? Tawag. Okay? Which includes uh, assignment, priority rules, and intrinsic functions. And of course, you have the input and output. So, kung ano yung uh, pinasok mo, dapat paglabas, ganun pa rin. 
So, kung nag, uh, input ka ng input ka ng instruction, so dapat yung output nun is uh, based on sa instruction na binigay mo. Hindi pwedeng pagpasok mo ng iklog, pag-input mo ng iklog, paglabas, chicken joy. So, hindi ganun. Okay? Pwede yung output na is uh, sunny side up or hard boiled egg. Ganun. Hindi agad siya making manok. And last topic is about modular programming. And then na yung mga uh, functions and subroutines. So since uh, you already have some background in programming, so we'll just focus only on 5 and 6 na topics, which is logical representation and modular programming. So yun na lang. So di na nato balikan ng simple information representation in number 2, 3 and 4. So I'm hope uh familiar na mo sa mga yan na topic. Okay? So what is structured programming? So structured programming is a set of rules that prescribe good style habits for the programmer. So its rules impose enough constraint to render the resulting codes far superior to unstructured versions. So, a key idea behind structured programming is that any numerical algorithm can be composed using the three fundamental control structures, which is the uh, sec sequence, selection, and repetition. By limiting ourselves to these structures, the resulting computer code will be clearer and easier to... So, ayun, ayun yung mga importante natin na matutunan. The sequencing, uh, selection, and the repetition. Okay? So... But although a uh, structured program is flexible enough to allow uh, considerable creativity and personal expression, its rule impose enough constraint to render the resulting codes far superior to an structured version. So in particular, the finished product is more elegant and easier to understand kung naka-structured programming ang inyong uh, programs or instructions. Okay, uh, next is uh, what is flowchart? So I think of most of you have already seen a flowchart, no? May mga box box and arrows, then may mga um, different shapes. So that ear that are uh, symbols. So flowchart is a visual or graphical representation of an algorithm. So the flowchart employs a series of blocks and arrows each of which represents a particular operation or step in the algorithm so the arrow represents a sequence in which the operations are implemented so it is step by step algorithm or instructions okay a flow chart so na asya start and there should be an end okay kung di siya from the top ang start then na asya series of uh, instructions uh, for the algorithm then, dapat na asya end, end point. Hindi pwedeng hanging ang imong flowchart. So, these are the figure 2.1 symbols used in flowchart. So, ang sa'yo tawag ane? Oblong. So, that is the, uh, ang tawag yan is name is terminal. So, its function is to represent the beginning or end of a program. So, kung hindi siya, kung muna gigamit sa start, so, ang end, dapat Ing ani gaya po ng symbol. Okay? Then we also have the flow lines. Yung may mga arrow. So, this represents the flow of that logic. So, the humps on the horizontal arrow indicate that it passes over and does not connect with the vertical flow lines. Then we have the rectangular shape. This code known as the process. So, it represents calculations or data manipulations or diha na ka nag maglalagay ng mga ano uh, instructions and we have the uh, so we have also the parallel parallelogram shape so it's include the input or the output represent inputs or out outputs of data and information then we have the the uh, rhombus or diamond shape so it means a decision so, it represents a comparison, question, or decision that determines alternative paths to be followed. Uh, example, ng kalagay ng mga question. Uh, 
example uh, example decision uh, papasaba ko sa subject na to ngayong sem yes sa left or no sa right ganun so doon nilalagay yung kung anong decision okay then we have the small circle each junction it represents the confluence of low lines and the uh, next shape I'm not sure kung saan yung shape which uh, means off page connector which represents a break that is continued on another page and this is the another uh, shape which count control loops which is used for loops which repeat a pre-specified number of alterations okay, okay. so make yourself familiar with this uh, symbol or shape for the use of making a flowchart so what are the reasons to study flowchart? So number one, they are still used for expressing and communicating algorithms. Number two, even if they are not employed routinely, there will be times when they will be they will prove useful in planning, unraveling, or communicating the logic of your own or someone else program. And most important, they are excellent pedagogical tools. So from teaching perspective, uh, they are very ideal vehicles for visualizing some of the fundamental control structures employed in computer programming. So, kung na, pag may flowchart, kumbaga, mas madali mo ma-visualize yung uh, set of instructions sa isang uh, computer programming. So, an alternative approach to express an algorithm that bridges the gap between flowcharts and computer code is called uh, pseudocode. Pseudocode. Okay, this technique, uh, sorry, what I let her T. So, this technique uses code like statements in place of the graphical symbols of the flowchart. So, keywords such as if, do, input, etc. are capitalized, whereas the conditions, processing steps, and tasks are in lowercase. Additionally, the processing steps are in indented. So, dapat indentioning. Uh, Familiar na kaayo mo sa mga indentioning. How will you will indent every st uh, each steps? Thus, the keywords form a sandwich around the steps to visually define the extent of each control structure. And one advantage of pseudo code is that it's easier to develop a program with it than with a flowchart. Tama? Yes. The pseudo code is also easier to modify and share with others. Yes. However, because of their graphic form, flowcharts sometimes are better suited for visualizing complex algorithms. So, kung complex daw, mas maganda daw uh, limitin yung mga flowcharts para mas madali kang makapag-visualize. Okay, any uh, questions? If you have some questions, just uh, comment on the comment section. Now, we will go to logical representation, which is sequence. So, the sequence structure expresses the trivial idea that unless you direct it otherwise, the computer code is to be implemented one instruction at a time. So, if you will look on the uh, figure below, so we have the flowchart, okay? So, dapat meron siya dito start, then end na symbol sa baba, uh, start na symbol din sa taas. Then, meron ano, uh, arrows. So, click mo na instruction 1 sa so pinakataas, pinaka first step, and second step, instruction 2, then instruction 3, instruction 4, and so on, and so on, until ang kabot ka sa end. So, sa pseudocode, uh, ganito lang ang pagsulat. Instruction 1, instruction 2, instruction 3, instruction 4. So, makita mo yung sequencing. So, since pare-pares lang sila ng instruction, yung intention nila, uh, pare-pares lang, uh, pare-pares or pantay-pantay lang din. Kuha. So, kung mag kung, uh, iba na siya ng instruction, dapat yung intention mo mayroon ng intention. Kung uh, related pa rin siya sa instruction 1, ganun. Pero pag sa instruction 2, iba na yung ano mo, uh, instruction or statement, dapat same pa rin ka ng intention. Pero kung uh, uh, related pa rin siya sa instruction 1, indent ka. Okay? So, in contrast to the step-by-step -step sequence structure, uh, selection provides means to split the program's flow into branches based on the outcomes of a logical condition. 
So, sample is the figure 2.3 shows that the two most fundamental ways for doing this. And the single alternative decision or if or then structure, figure 2.3a, allows for a detour in the program flow if a logical condition is true. Okay. If it's false, nothing happens and the program moves directly to the next statement following the end if. So, uh, this is the flowchart. So, in my condition, kunyari, papasa ba ako ngayon same o hindi? Kung true, kung papasa ka. So, dito siya. Papasa ka, ang grade mo, 90. Kung false, or kung hindi ka papasa, babagsak ka. Dito, dire-direcho, bagsak. O yan, end, bagsak. <laughs> So, if it's false, nothing happens and the program moves directly to the next statement following the end if. So, the double alternative decision or if then else structure, that's like in figure 2.3b, behaves in the same manner for a true condition. However, if the condition is false, the program implements the code between the else and the end if. So, sa figure A, so, kita nyo yung pseudocode. So, ang first statement, if condition you will pass then it's true and nakita nyo yung intentioning nya so since related pa rin sya dun sa first statement or instruction so magkawa ka ng indent true black kung true kung true 90 uh, or 75 ang grade then kung hindi naman sya true and if or diretso na ka sa bagsak ganun so nakukuha nyo class ito yung flowchart is to code. So, mas maganda kung meron ka muna ng flowchart para mas madali ka makagawa uh, ng isang uh, sudo code. Pero kung uh, very uh, expert na ka sa paggawa ng mga set of instructions, so, madali na lang yung ano, pag-sequencing uh, ng sudo code. Or in uh, figure 2.3b, so we have uh, two choices, true or false so kung papasa ka, yes 75 ang grade kung hindi uh, 4 or INC WIP ang grade so may chance pa and pag nagawa, and tapos pasa or bagsak so nakuha nyo kung kini, uh, first condition, if condition, then kung true, then um, meron siyang intention na next statement, true block or else, balik siya dito sa false, then may false blocks related sa another statement, then false block, then end. Okay, so nakita nyo yung junction, gamit yung junction. Yan, junction sa mga arrows or directions. Okay, although the if and then and the if, then else constructs are sufficient to construct any numerical algorithm, Two other variants are commonly used. So, suppose that the else clause, clause of an if, then else contains another if or then. For such cases, the else and the if can be combined in the if, then, or else if structure shown in figure 2.48. So, notice how in figure, there is a chain or cascade of decisions. So, the first one is the if statement and each successive. Successive decision is an else if statement. So going down the chain, the first condition encountered the test through will cause a branch to its corresponding code block or followed by an exit of the structure. So at the end of the chain of condition, if all the conditions of the step falls, so an optional else block can be included. So here in figure 2.4, so para na siyang uh, complex. So marami na siyang set of instructions, no? So, pwede rin pala siyang uh, combination of if, then, or else clause. So, example dito sa figure 2.A. So, condition, true or false. Uh, ang condition mo is, uh, papasa ka ba ngayon same sa subject na to? Kung true, ito yung gagawin niya. Kung, kung hindi, kung false, may another na naman na set of condition. Then, ano naman yung ano yung condition? Magpa-comply ka o hindi? Then, yes, comply. Uh, 4 or WIP ang grade or 3 ang grade kung hindi WIP ang grade tapos may na naman condition i-comply ang WIP o hindi kung o oh, i-comply oh, magpasa ng mga uh, requirements para kumasa ganun kung hindi 
bagsak na talaga. 5 na ang grade. <laughs> Ganun. Then, sudukod niya. So, first statement. Ito yung first statement ninyo. If condition, kung true, then uh, black one. Then, uh, another statement. Kung false naman, ito siya. Condition. Then, for the next uh, statement or instruction, meron siyang condition na naman. Black two. So, you notice the intention else if condition uh, black 2 iba na naman siya then else if condition black 3 to or else compose and if okay kung mali uh, dito siya pause 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 until dumating siya sa black 4 then mag end so at the end of the chain of conditions if all the conditions have tested false and optional else, black can be good. Okay. So the case structure is a variant on this type of decision making. Uh, figure 2.4b. So rather than testing individual conditions, so the branching is based on the uh, value of a single test expression. So depending on its value, different blocks of code will be implemented in, the, in addition. So, an optional block can be implemented if the expression takes on none of the prescribed values or case else. So, figure B is case structure or select or switch. So, kumbaga, uh, each expression, then pipilis lang siya choices. Kung value 1, uh, block 1, then to value 4, block 3, block 3, or else, block 4. Then, B. Ganun. So, ang sudo code niya, so parang siyang question select case test expression so uh, different cases uh, para para sa intention then kung case value 1 then block 1 case value 2 block 2 case value 3 block 3 or else kung wala sa tatlong case nagawin niya ang block 4 then and select ganun okay so notice the intention na in the first statement so this is the first statement okay so Itong apat na statement, connected lang siya sa first statement. Kaya ganun yung intention yun. Then end, start end. Okay. Now, let's go to uh, repetition. So, uh, repetition provides a means to implement instructions repeatedly. So, the resulting constructs called loops come into flavors distinguished by how they are terminated. So, klaro naman ang ibig sabihin ng repetition, no? Kung baka paulit-ulit na uh, pinap-implement. So, the first and most fundamental type is called a decision loop because it terminates based on the result of a logical condition. So, figure 2.5 shows the most generic type of decision loop. So, the, the do exit construct also called a break loop. So, let's check the figure 2.5. So, do and do, dapat start it sa do and it will end on end do. Okay, so ang statement, so block 1, ito yung sa step or sequence, block 1, then condition, condition is true, then end, okay, false, block 2, and kung false, repeat again the process. Yan, pabalik ulit sa start. Okay. So, yun yung natawag na repetition. So, kung false, 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 then balik ulit. Repeat. Pero kung true na, kung makuha na niya yung uh, gusto mo uh, resolve, then i-end na niya yung uh, instruction. So, sa suitable din niya, ganun lang. Sa first na statement, do, then intention, 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 then end do. Okay? So, this structure repel, repeats until a logical condition is true. It's not necessary to have two blocks in this structure. So, if the first block is not included, the structure is sometimes called a pretest loop. Why? Because the logical test is performed before anything occurs. Alternatively, if the second block is omitted, it's called a post-test loop because both blocks are included. So the general case in figure 2.5 is sometimes called a mid-test loop. The break loop in figure 2.5 is called a logical loop because it terminates on a logical conditions. So in contrast, a count controlled or do for loop 
performs a specific specified number of so in contrast a count control or do for loop performs a specified number of repetitions or alterations in uh, figure 2.6 mm, uh, we have some more complicated flowchart so, so do for loop so you have some set of instruction there control and agad or compose uh, Sampo sa statement mo, instruction mo, 1, I start. So, may gagawin siya dyan. Then, another instruction, I and uh, step block. Then, kung nagawa niya, kung pull siya, gawin niya itong block. Kung mali pa rin, babalik. Okay, hantod. Makuha niya ang value na true or true value. So, the count control loop works as follows so the index represented in figure 2.6 i is a variable that is set at an initial value of start and the index whether the uh, the program then tests where the either whether the index is less than or equal to the final value okay then finish if so it executes the body of the loop and then cycles back to the do statement Every time the end do statement is encountered, the index is automatically increased by this step. Thus, the index acts as a counter. And when the index is greater than the final value, uh, it will finish. So, tapos na siya. The computer automatically exits the loop and transfers control to the line following the end do statement. So, note that for nearly all computers languages, if the step is omitted, the computer assumes it is equal to uh, 1.2. I'm a DNA, so dapat it is equal to 1 lang. 1. So, sorry for the error. So, omit na lang tong 0.2. So, we have some example about algorithm for roots of equations. So, I'm sure familiar mo sa quadratic equation ax squared plus 4x plus c is equal to 0 can be calculated or determined using the uh, quadratic formula which is equal to x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so I'm sure uh, memorize na din yung siyang uh, formula I usually magawas ni sa board exam na ni siya permanente Pero I'm sure your calculator already knows how to compute quadratic equation. So first thing need for you to do is develop an algorithm that does the following. So first, prompt the user for coefficients a, b, and c. So kung mag input ni mo na yung value ng a, b, and c. Then implement the quadratic formula guarding against all eventualities. For example, avoiding division by zero and allowing for complex roots. Then, it will display the solution that is the values for x and allows the user the option to return to step 1 and repeat the process. So, kumbaga, recompute ulit. Okay. So, we'll be we'll using the do and do uh, sequence. So, for step number 1, so, prompts the user to input for the coefficients of a, b, and c. So, first statement mo is input a, b, and c. So, yun ang unang gagawin ng computer. So, dapat you need to input the values of a, b, and c. Then, second is uh, second step is to implement the quadratic formula. So, kumbaga mag-calculate niya using the quadratic equation. So, I have two values of x, the x1 and the x2. So, the formula is negative b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by uh, 2a. And the x2 is uh, negative na. Iba na, diba? Okay, that's the step 2. And for step 3, display x1, the value of x1 and uh, x2. Then, we have the repetition statement. Display, try again. Ito na yung ano, condition. 
Tapos meron na siyang condition na try again, yes or no. So if yes, input response. So if yes, the response is no. So exit. Pero kung if the response is yes, uh, babalik pa rin siya dun sa pinakaunang statement. So mag-input ka na naman na values of A, B, and C. Then, Pintutin yung value na x1, x2, then display the values x1 and x2, then uh, lalabas ulit yung statement na display, try again, then input your response, yes or no, ganun. Okay? So that is a loop test. Okay, so klaro. Ang some example, so ganun lang. Medyo madali lang tingnan, pero sa implementation, I'm not sure. Lalo na sa mga complicated or complex problems. So, simple lang. Kasi simple lang yung ano, uh, equation or formula. So, let's go to the next lesson which is called modular programming. So, another approach in a uh, foregoing example can be employed to develop an algorithm for the parachutist problem. So, recall that given an initial condition for time and velocity, the problem involved iteratively solving the formula. The formula... Uh, B initial plus 1 is equal to B initial plus D B initial over B T over uh, delta T. So now, uh, if we desire to attain good accuracy, we would need to employ small steps. So therefore, we would probably want to apply the formula repeatedly from the initial time to the final time. So consequently, an algorithm to solve the problem would be based on a loop. Okay. So repetition of loop. Excuse me. So suppose that we started the computation from the time is equal to zero, and wanted to predict the uh, velocity at time is equals to four seconds. So v four. And we'll be using a small time step. Delta T that is equals to uh, 0.5 seconds. Two collisions. So we'll be, be using the this equation for the loop. So how many times we will be using it? So we have the time. Kinala tong time is four seconds. With an increment of delta t, ah ha, point, shit, sorry, five seconds, zero, ah ni eraser, so that is equal to eight, so that is number of eight times will be using a uh, repetition because the result is exact so that is the ratio is an integral so we can use a count control loop as the basis for for the algorithm so here is an example of the uh, pseudocode so we will prepare the pseudocode so we will use the uh, excel program to uh, to make a pseudocode So first G it's constant nine point eight two one then input and say not need to input the value of uh, M and the uh, cancel and the C D C D or drug coefficient or kung uh, dapat kung sige input nyo di ha dapat iyon ang maunang input nyo na values or else mamamali or pwede rin cd or m or m cd ganun then what else okay. ah sorry kay wala pa man nato ni sya gdefine so maunang um, sya nag error Then we also need to input 
the values of the initial time initial velocity final time and change in time also need to define t is part of the initial is also equal to the velocity initial and n so we need to uh, tf minus t initial by by tt then ano yung dapat gawin ng ano program or computer do for do for i is equal to 1 to n so yung n kanina uh, 8 na 8 times then the next statement is uh, related to the first statement na do for so we need to indent dvdt so na yung formula sa ano na g minus ct over n times b b is equal to b plus times d So, itong mga formula, galing na yun sa mga previous na uh, lesson. So, lesson 1. Okay. Space. And after we, so, mahuman na niya, ito yung formula, i-calculate. Then, endo. And then, ano, sequence, then, display. The result B. Okay, so ayan yung ano niya, pseudocode. Okay, so nakuha. So in particular, it will all work only if the computation interval is evenly divisible by the time uh, step. So in order to cover such cases, Decision loop can be substituted in place of the shaded area in the previous pseudocode. So, what if it is not a uh, divisible by the time step? So, the final result would be so, ito na. so we denote the dt as uh, each variables. So, it's not divisible by the script step. Ito na gagawin niya. Do na. Do and do. If the t plus dt is greater than the final time tf, then complete niya ang dt is equal to tf minus t. And, and if dp dt is equal to your formula, then complete niya ang value of b and t. If t is greater than or equal to tf, then exit and then it will display the velocity. So as soon as we enter the loop, we use an if then statement. So, to the test whether adding t plus dt will take us beyond the end of the interval. So, if it does not, which would usually be the first, at first we do nothing. So, if it does, we would need to shorten the interval by setting the variable step h to tf minus t. By doing this, we guarantee that the next step falls exactly on the tf after we implement this final step. So, the loop will terminate because the condition t is greater than or equal to tf 
will test true. So notice that we assign the uh, value of dt to h. So we create this time variable so that our routine does not change the given value of dt. If and when we shorten the time step, we do this in anticipation that we might need to use the original value of dt somewhere else in the event that this code is integrated within a larger program. Okay, hope uh, you understand. So next we'll go to modular programming. So modular programming is computer programs that can be divided into small sub programs or modules that can be developed and tested separately. So breaking complicated tasks or subjects into more manageable parts is one way to make them easier to handle. The most important at attribute of modules is that uh, they be as independent and self-contained as possible. So in addition, they are typically designed to perform a scientific well-defined function and have one entry and one exit point. As such, they are usually uh, short, generally 50 to 100 instructions in length and highly focused. Excel macros and MATLAB functions are designed to receive some information, perform a calculation, and return results. So those modular thinking is also consistent, consistent with how programming is implemented in package environments. In addition, it should be mentioned that much of programming related to software packages like Excel and MATLAB involves the development of sub-programs. Excel macros and MATLAB functions are designed to receive some information, perform a calculation, and return result. Task modular thinking is also consistent with how programming is implemented in package environments. So modular programming, so same as sa module, uh, by part, lesson 1, part 1, part 2, part 3, ganun. Module I by mod or mo module. So modular programming has a number of advantages. So one is the use of small or self-contained units makes the underlying logic easier to devise and to understand both the developer and the user. Development is facilitated because each module can be perfected in isolation. Uh, for large projects, different programmers can work on individual parts. So yun yung advantage ng modular programming. So kahit iba-iba yung programmer, so each programmer can work on uh, one part and the other another part another part and on top uh, uh, the program modular design also increases the ease with which a program can be debugged and tested because errors can be more easily isolated finally program maintenance and modifications are facilitated so this is primarily due to the fact that the new modules can be developed to perform additional tasks and then easily incorporated into the already coherent an organized scheme so while all these attributes are recent enough to use modules the most important reason related to numerical engineering problem solving is that they allow you to maintain your own library of useful modules for later use in other programs so yung ginagawa din sa ano, excel bba language so is a example of modular programming so nag insert ta og uh, module different kinds of modules so example kung mahuma to matapos natin yung isang module pwede rin natin siyang insert sa isang program to form a bigger uh, instruction or program so ex uh, on the figure 2.7 shows a function developed in to implement Euler's method so this is a kind of Euler's method notice that this function applies application and the previous versions deeper in how they handle input or output so in the former versions input and output directly come from via input statements and to via display statements so next start those are input statement and and uh, display statement the user so in the function the inputs are passed into the function via its argument list so next start sa function Euler so this is a Euler methods. So function Euler DT, TI, TF, 
and y i uh, this is the y is y is the uh, b or uh, velocity i okay so let's always start with the function modular program function euler so automatic sa modules niya i-click mo lang yung euler functions ito na yung agad yung gagawin niya so if you will notice so yung ginawa natin kanina statement natin do and do so, so since function na siya hindi tayo naglagay ng into statement sa so functions na automatic okay then yung uh, b na naging y okay so the output is returned by the assignment statement y is equal to euler so in addition, recognize how generic the routine routine has become. So there are no references that is specific of the parachutist problem. For example, rather than calling the dependent variable b for velocity, so we make use the more generic label y is used within the function. So further notice that the derivative is not computed within the function by an explicit equation. Rather, another function dy must be invoked to compute it. Okay, this acknowledges the fact that we might want to use this function for many different problems beyond solving for the parachutist velocity. So one program is the Excel. So Excel is the spreadsheet produced by Microsoft Incorporated. Spreadsheets are a typical type of mathematical software that allow the user to enter and perform calculations on rows and columns of data. As such, they are computerized version of a large accounting worksheet on which large interconnected calculations can be implemented and displayed. Because the entire calculation is updated when any value on the sheet is changed, spreadsheets are ideal for what if sorts of analysis. So Excel has some built-in numerical capabilities including equation solving, or fitting, and optimization. So it also includes BBA as a macro language that can be used to implement numerical calculations. So finally, it has several visualization tools such as scraps and three-dimensional surface plots that serve as valuable adjuncts for numerical analysis. So in figure 2.8, we have the fundamental uh, control structures. So figure A is this is the code and in B is the Excel BBA. So, ito yung ano niya, katumbas niya sa XL. Ito yung sudo code mo, if then code, then ito naman yung sa BBA language. Sa XL BBA. If then else, so ito yung uh, equivalent or counterpart. So, if then else or if, ito yung katumbas niya sa XL. Then yung case. Okay. So, ito rin yung gagawin niya sa XL. Then do exit. We have the do loop. So, do and do. Then sa Excel naman, do loop lang. So, count control do, do for, and do. Then sa Excel, for, and then next. Then next. So, make sure na familiarize yourself the following Excel uh, BBA language. Okay? Just print this or guide. And please watch the... Uh, the attached video on sa canvas I have prepared some video instructions so another example of modular, modular programming is the MATLAB so MATLAB is the flagship software product of the MATWORK Incorporated which was co-founded by the numerical analysts Clint Muller and John and Little as the name implies MATLAB was originally developed as a matrix laboratory so the major element of MATLAB is still the matrix. So mathematical manipulations of matrices are very conveniently implemented in an easy to use interactive environment. So to this matrix manipulation, MATLAB has added a variety of numerical functions, symbolic computations, and visualization tools. So programs can be written as so-called M files that can be used to implement numerical calculations. So the Excel element the I is uh, Excel. Uh, with macro ang files dapat pag-i-save niya siya 
uh, you should recognize that normal MATLAB is, is closely related to programming. So, for example, suppose that you want to determine the analytical solution to the parachutist problem. So, this could be done with the following series of MATLAB commands. So, sa MATLAB, may ganito yung itsura ng sudo code. Which means to find the variables, then compute agad yung formula. Then with the result being spread as the velocity. So that's the sequence of commands just like a sequence of instructions in a typical programming language. So parang madali lang matlab. Input mo lang yung mga values ng mga constant variables. Then input mo rin yung formula na yung nag-display na agad yung value. So looks simple. But uh, we will not focus on MATLAB language. Okay? So we will not be using MATLAB. Since wala tay software ane, and dilipot ko kabalo mga gamit ane yung MATLAB. Since most of us must prepare ang Excel, must teach it in ito. So focus on sa Excel. Okay? So another uh, modular programming software is MATCAD. So, MATCAD attempts to bridge the gap between spreadsheets like Excel and Notepad. So, it was originally developed by Alan Rasdo of MIT who co-founded MathSoft Incorporated, which published the first commercial version in 1986. MATCAD is essentially an interactive notepad that allows engineers and scientists to perform a number of common mathematical data handling and graphical tasks. Information and equations are input to a whiteboard design environment that is similar in spirit to a page of paper. So unlike programming tool or spreadsheet, MATCAD's interface accepts and displays natural mathematical notation using keystrokes or menu palette clicks with no programming required. Because the worksheet contains live calculations, a single keystroke that changes an input or equation instantly returns an updated result. So it is, it is a live calculation. So MATCAD can perform tasks in either numeric or symbolic mode. So in numeric mode, MATCAD functions and operators give numerical responses. Whereas in symbolic mode, results are given as general expressions or equations. So MAPO 5, a comprehensive symbolic math package, is the basis of symbolic mode and was incorporated into MATCAD in 1993. So again, we will not uh, go into details of MATCADs because we will not be using this software MATCAD. Okay, for assignment number 2. So, andun din siya sa may uh, module lesson 2. So, write your solution in one whole cup band. So, write your name, course, and section at the upper left, the date at the upper right, and the assignment at the center top. So, given the following figure, you are tasked to write a pseudocode to implement the flowchart depicted in this figure. So, make sure that proper intention is included to make this structure clear. So, this is an example of parang do and do. Uh, combination of statement. Okay, so I uh, know answer should be posted in a uh, Canvas platform. So, dapat handwritten. Okay. So, that's all for today and see you on next meeting. Bye, guys. So congratulations, you completed the second lesson. So you can now proceed to lesson 3. So back mo mo to lesson 3. So break break sa mo. Tula sa book ML or count count sa selfie. Okay, so bye bye.